Well, again, Craig from the Prepper Stop here. This is our specialty, actually, radiation detectors. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions about it. I see it all the time. All the shows I do, people come to my table and say, oh, Geiger counters. Well, I'm here to tell you, you do not want a Geiger counter. If you want it for emergency purposes, you do not want a Geiger counter. These are not all Geiger counters. I'm going to tell you what the difference is. So what's the difference? This is what all the emergency services had in their possession. It's called a radiological survey meter. This here is called a Geiger counter. Now you can see that the Geiger counter has a probe with a wire and the survey meter does not. So the press has really been, and movies have, did disservice to this for many decades about Geiger counters and survey meters. They look about the same. At least you know their radiation. That's a good start. Here's the difference. A Geiger counter, let's, let's start with, uh, let's start with the, the rate meter. I don't know if you can see that. The middle of the scale there, you see R and then per hour. That's Renkins per hour. Okay, Renkins per hour. Now you see it starts out of one. Okay, so the first end of part of the scale is one Renkins per hour. So if you were at one, you'd be reading one Renkin per hour. All right, now the Geiger counter, if you look at that one, you'll see it's CM or counts per minute, or at the top you'll see it says milla Renkins per hour. Milla meaning a thousand. And you'll notice the first scale on there is 0.1. So that makes the Geiger counter 10,000 times more sensitive than the survey meter. Okay, why is that important? This is a toy. There's nothing I'm going to measure with this that's going to hurt me, at least in the short term. The needle moving on this, that's big trouble. Remember, this is 10,000 times more sensitive than this. The needle's moving on that, that's you've got to evacuate a whole lot of area to find out what the world's going on because this is for high level gamma. This is only for low level beta and low level gamma. I would never want to get stuck with a Geiger counter in an emergency because it wouldn't even work. Why is that? If you overload this Geiger Muller tube, this gauge will show zero. It won't peg out, it won't do anything, it'll be dead. Saturates the tube, done. So you could have a high level, a lot of radiation, and you wouldn't even know it with a Geiger counter. That's why all the emergency services had these. They never had a Geiger counter unless they had more money in the program. So that's the main difference. You have to learn that because so many people are mistakenly running out and buying Geiger counters instead of survey meters. If you want something for emergencies, you really want a survey meter, radiological survey meter, not a Geiger counter. Gamma rays are the most dangerous, and that's what these, these are geared towards to measure. Now, people are also mistakenly after the Fukushima thing, <laughs> and I've done many articles and many lectures about that. We're not being irradiated from Japan, certainly not any levels that anybody could ever measure. Certainly not with a Geiger counter. Remember, the Geiger counter is 10,000 times more sensitive. If you bought a Geiger counter thinking you're going to measure radiation from Japan, you're just plain wrong. Unless you're in Japan. Uh, if you bought a Geiger counter because you think you're going to find radiation in your food, you're just plain wrong. You can't do it. Unless it's extremely contaminated. Here's an example. Bluefin tuna found off the coast of California found to have radioactive cesium in it. Which they said could only be attributed to the nuclear power plant disaster in Fukushima. Well, if you read that whole story instead of reading the, the, the fear-mongering headlines, you'll find that the levels of radiation found in that bluefin tuna were 20 times magnitude lower than the normal background radiation of the fish to begin with. Actually, 30 times. That's 30 times magnitude lower than the normal background radiation of the fish to begin with. Which, by the way, is equivalent of eating about 1 20th of a banana, which has potassium in it. And banana you can't measure with a Geiger counter either. Uh, another type of food that we commonly have is Brazil nuts. It has radium in it. And you can't really measure that either. It's just slightly above background range. You can't measure anything lower than background radiation with a Geiger counter. You need something called a mass spectrometer that starts at about $100,000. So you're wasting your money. In my opinion, you're wasting your money if you're running out buying a Geiger counter for emergency purposes. If you went out and spent $500 in the midst of the Fukushima disaster, then you got taken because what you really needed was a survey meter, but you're not going to get any ration from either, for either one of them here in any of the several states, even if you're in Alaska, Hawaii, or uh, uh, California. And you need to go to ForbiddenKnowledge.info and look at the radiation page to find out what I'm talking about. I prove it all the time. All you really have to do is study how radiation travels, and you'll know that they're lying to you when they tell you we're all being radiated from Japan in any of the several states. 
So that's the main difference. You have to learn the difference between the two uh, about survey meters and Geiger counters. So for now, I'm going to have to say goodbye. Uh, my name is Craig from uh, the, the preppersstop.com or forbiddenknowledge.info. So long.